Hollywood icon Zaza Gabor lived an unapologetically lavish life, full of glitz and glamour. While her acting appearances in classics like Moulin Rouge often took a backseat to her buzzy personal exploits, Zaza still occupied some of the most exceptional estates worldwide. From her Palm Springs party pad turned pink Barbie dream house, all the way to Bel Air Mansion where she spent her final decades, join me as we tour a few of Zaza's fabulous former home and get a peek into her glittering world. You can't talk iconic homes without an equally fabulous owner. Born in Budapest in 1917, Zaza Gabor and her two sisters were groomed for the spotlight from an early age. The striking trio fled to the US during World War II and by the 1950s became bona fide socialite sensations. Known for acting, marrying well, and witty banter, Zaza once famously said, I am a marvelous housekeeper. Every time I leave a man, I keep his house. Early in her career, Gabor landed small movie roles in films like Lovely to Look At and Were Not Married. Her first major role came in the 1952 film Moulin Rouge. Though her acting talent was questioned by critics, her European style and personality attracted attention. In 1942, Gabor married her first husband, hotel magnate Onrad Hilton. During their marriage, she claimed to have suffered abuse. Her only child, daughter Francesca Hilton, was born in 1947, shortly before their divorce. Francesca and Zaza often feuded over the years. Two of Zaza's most well-known husbands were actor George Sanders and socialite Herbert Hutner. She once credited Hutner with bailing her out of financial ruin. By the 1970s, Gabor made frequent TV appearances rather than seeking film roles. She was often tapped as a talk show guest, game show panelist, or reality show participant, where she drew on her quick wit and feisty charm. She penned several autobiographies documenting her colorful past. In her personal life, family and money issues plagued Zaza for decades. By the 2000s, she faced major health problems too. In 2002, she was seriously injured in a car accident, leaving her partially paralyzed and reliant on a wheelchair. A stroke in 2005 further debilitated her. In 2010 and 2011, Gabor underwent surgeries to replace her hip and amputate her leg. She spent her final years cared for by her ninth husband, Frederick Prinz von Anhalt. At their Bel Air home. After years of illness, Zaza Gabor died in 2016 at age 99. In 1964, this sprawling Palm Springs estate was custom built for, you guessed it, Zaza's equally fabulous sister Magda. Husband number four, Tony Gallucci, commissioned the desert retreat for Magda, who lived here over 30 years. Then, after Magda's passing in 1997, her sister Zaza herself moved in and occupied the pad until her death in 2016. 16. Perched atop a hill in the sought-after neighborhood of Little Tuscany, this place boasts insane 360 views. The home's bright Pepto-Pink exterior pops against the surrounding desert scape. But the real vibrant punch lives inside where almost every inch embraces bold maximalism. I'm talking mirrored walls, shimmering chandeliers, and original furnishings that Zaza handpicked. In the entryway, dark hand-carved double doors bring the Hollywood glam mood. A vast, open concept living dining space steals the show thanks to a twinkling chandelier, grand piano, and mirrored walls for miles reflecting views. The kitchen turns up the heat with its gold ceiling, two-toned cabinets, and complete Viking appliances. An extra glitzy touch, the original Hungarian rotisserie from the sisters' era. I can just envision Zaza hosting her fabulous friends around that table. Each of the three guest bedrooms channel splashy signature style. But the true showstopper is the master suite. Think custom botanical wallpaper, gold accents, makeup station, and cozy lounge, perfect for curling up with caviar, champagne, and secrets from the stars. An attached spa bath with vanity, shower, and luxe soaking tub completes this wing. Outside, the party continues poolside, thanks to the bright blue mosaic tiles and a bubbling spa perfectly integrated into the backyard terraces. Sip vino on the veranda as the sun dips behind desert mountains for that cinematic glow. Now asking $3.8 million, this color-saturated California dream home, once owned by Zaza, could be yours. 
What would a legendary tour be without a stop in Bel Air? Alzaza owns homes scattered worldwide and Epic Estate here anchored her for over four decades. Scooped up for around 250k back in 1973, this stately French style property would run our girl over 23 million dollars these days. Originally built in 1955 for none other than billionaire businessman Howard Hughes, rumor even has it the king himself, Elvis Presley, occupied this pad back in his early Hollywood days. Perched on one private gated acre, this mustard-hued manor spans over 6,400 square feet across two levels pure old world glamour. Out front, a U-shaped drive and sparkling fountain lead to elegant arched entryways. Inside soaring ceilings, crown moldings, and antique chandeliers give the formal dining and living rooms a timeless charm. But upstairs is where the real star-studded fun happens. Zaza transformed Howard's original bachelor pad blueprint, adding an entertainer's dream second level with a wet bar, dance floor, and jetliner views. The resort-style backyard saw plenty of splashy pool parties too, thanks to a sprawling brick patio, a diving pool, and plenty of lush greenery. While interiors are outdated, Zaza embraces vintage spirit with touches like antique fireplaces and Howard's quirky custom door latches designed to confuse intruders. Zaza occupied her Bel Air residence until passing at age 99 in late 2016. The next year, it sold for around $10.5 million to developers. As Zaza always said, one lifetime is not enough. But perhaps in the next chapter, her iconic Hollywood with pedigree property could see new life. Now that we're wrapping up our tour of Zaza Gabor's marvelous homes, before you go, what is your dream home feature? Mirrored walls, champagne cellars, and secret passageways like Ms. Gabor, or maybe a sprawling spa bathroom like at her pink palace? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer, and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Prepare to step back in time to the glorious era of old Hollywood where beauty, talent, and elegance defined an entire generation of actresses. In this mesmerizing journey, we're going to explore the captivating lives and extraordinary homes of five iconic stars, delving into every exquisite detail from the interior to the exteriors. Buckle up for a tour of these timeless abodes, each with a story as enchanting as the stars themselves. We're gonna kick things off with Marilyn Monroe and her iconic bungalow. Our first stop is Marilyn's enchanting world, the quintessential Hollywood icon. Nestled in the heart of Brentwood, Los Angeles, Marilyn once owned a cozy bungalow, which was a vision of classic glamour and elegance. Step inside to discover the soft, muted colors, vintage Hollywood memorabilia, and elegant furnishings that adorned her living space. The bedroom, where Marilyn found peace, is an intimate space that tells a story of vulnerability and charm. In 1962, Marilyn Monroe acquired the 1929 Spanish colonial hacienda for $77,500. Imagine that. Houses were actually that price. Anyways, this was shortly after her divorce from playwright Arthur Miller. Despite having resided in an impressive total of 43 residents throughout her life, this was the very first property that she she personally purchased. The allure of this residence, a four bedroom, three bathroom abode is clear. It was famously referred to by movie producer and neighboring resident Rodney Lieber as one of the most renowned houses in the world in the LA Times. Situated on half an acre within the renowned Brentwood neighborhood, the property features a generous swimming pool and a thriving citrus orchard. Tragically, it was also the location where Monroe was discovered deceased at the age of 36, six months after she she had moved in due to an overdose of sleeping pills. Next, we'll visit the timeless beauty Audrey Hepburn, celebrated for her grace and style. The actress called a chic apartment in New York City her home, which was an elegant space that definitely mirrored her sophistication and love for simplicity. As we explore this charming abode, you'll witness the delicate balance of art and functionality in her decor. The living room bathed in soft, natural light evokes a sense of serenity. Her love for plants and vibrant yet understated accents show Audrey's refined taste. 
this apartment tells the story of a woman who is the embodiment of beauty and grace both in her on-screen and off-screen life. Her iconic brownstone from the hit Breakfast at Tiffany's is also an actual home in New York City. Tucked away in New York City's Upper East Side, this brownstone is picturesque. It's cream, Italian-style exterior trimmed appropriately in Tiffany blue. Originally designed in 1866 by John Sexton, the building, which appears in the 1961 film as a series of separate units, was renovated into a duplex in 1947. Spanning over 4,465 square feet, this brownstone spreads its five bedrooms and four baths over a staggering five stories. Inside the home is the embodiment of New York glamour. Gold accents and mini chandeliers throughout the home are positioned alongside sumptuous white couches and fireplaces for an old world feel. Our journey now takes us to the lavish villa of Elizabeth Taylor in Beverly Hills. This extraordinary residence was a testament to her opulent lifestyle and charm. As we stroll through the meticulously landscaped gardens, we'll feel the grandeur of this estate. The Mediterranean inspired architecture with its ornate details and sprawling rooms captures the essence of her larger than life personality. Elizabeth lived in many homes, but I'm sure you would too if you were married eight times. This gated estate in the hills she shared with her second husband, Michael Welding, was purchased by the couple in 1954, and they proceeded to raise their two sons here until their ultimate divorce. The 1952 built home sat on two acres of land with six beds and seven baths inside, as well as sweeping views of down downtown LA, the Pacific Ocean, and the valley below. The mansion covered over 7,700 square feet, featuring a large car park, open patio, fountain courtyard, four fireplaces, art studio, atrium, maid quarters, and much more. Our next destination is the stunning home of Ava Gardner, tucked away in the lush hills of Nichols Canyon, Los Angeles. This oasis was a retreat from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, a tranquil haven for Ava. Each room in this home is a work of art, telling the story story of an extraordinary woman who found solace in the simplicity and tranquility of her home. In 1948, following the dissolution of Ava's first two brief marriages to Mickey Rooney and band leader Artie Shaw, and before she went on to marry Frank Sinatra in 1951, the stunning actress decided to put down some roots in this home in LA's Nichols Canyon. The house she bought for herself was a simple stucco cottage, set up on a high and sunny rocky slope. While modestly decorated, evidently by the actress herself, it seems to hold some of the actual woman who dwelled somewhere within one of Hollywood's famous, maybe even notorious, love goddesses. Our final destination is the enigmatic mansion of Greta Garbo, situated in the heart of Beverly Hills. Greta's mysterious allure is mirrored in the elegant architecture and exquisite interior of her home. The inside spaces, adorned with antique furniture and rare art pieces, evoke a sense of timeless charm. Since her arrival in Hollywood in 1925, Greta frequently moved between various rented residences. As the story goes, around 1937 coincided siding with the release of the costume drama Camille, the Swedish board actress temporarily settled into a newly constructed Beverly Hills home with her recently divorced friend and rumored boyfriend, Leopold Stokowski. Stokowski, the British orchestra conductor with distinctive white hair, was renowned for pioneering designer jeans and being the father to Anderson Cooper. According to most accounts, Garbo had already relocated to another rented house by the time Ninochka hit theaters in 1939. This dwelling features a total of five and possibly six bedrooms, along with five bathrooms and a powder room spread across its three stories, encompassing almost 4,700 square feet. Designed to make the most of the canyon-framed view of the downtown skyline, the residence boasts two fireplaces, one of them located in the main floor guest bedrooms. Additionally, three balconies offer splendid views, including one of the primary bedroom and another you can access from an on suite office bedroom situated beneath a private staircase leading from the street level to car garage. As we wrap up this special journey of the one-time homes of these old Hollywood stars, we can see the legacy they left behind. These houses are not just structures, they are the reminder of an era of timeless beauty, elegance, and charm, where legends of the silver screen found their own personal havens. Each home carries the stories enchanting as the stars who once graced them. Did you have a favorite old Hollywood pad? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on those notifications
notifications so you never miss a video. I'll see you all next time. Bye!